What's up, Mitten Squad? My name is Paul, welcome back to another Top 10 video. In this video, I'll be going over 10 things you might not know about Skyrim. Number 10. In the game's files, there's an unused pit or arena called Windhelm Pit Entrance. Entering the pit spawns two Argonians, both male, Nords, Dark Elves, and Imperial NPCs. They are all called Pit Fans, who are supposed to be spectators. It is believed that Windhelm was going to have an arena at some point in development where you would face off against animals or NPC bandits. There are also pit guards who are fully voiced, but they cannot be viewed during normal gameplay. The place can be viewed by entering the console commands COC Windhelm Pit Entrance and COC Windhelm Pit Exterior. Number 9. Bethesda was approached to make a game based on George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire, from which the TV series Game of Thrones is also derived. Although they wanted to do it, they turned down the offer to focus on Skyrim. To quote Todd Howard, we wanted to do our own world, that's where we wanted to put our time into. Before we were even making Skyrim, there was a conversation with George R. R. Martin's people. They thought it would be a good match, and so did we actually. But then we thought about if that was where we wanted to spend our time. It was tempting though. Number 8. By using console commands and editing the game's data to disable game boundaries, it is possible to travel outside Skyrim's map. Going far enough south, it's possible to find an untextured placeholder for the White Gold Tower where the Imperial City should be. Number 7. Directly south of Markarth, near Purewater Run, there's a stone bridge near a waterfall. If it's your first time there, you'll see two goats walking on the bridge, and a third climbing up from under the bridge to join them. If you go under the bridge, you'll find a dead troll. This scenario is a reference to the Norwegian fairy tale, Three Billy Goats Gruff. Number 6. In the Vilmer Inn in Ivarstead, you'll find a woman by the name of Tembo Widearm. Her name is a subtle reference to Star Trek The Next Generation episode, Dark Muck, in which Picard and his crew encounter a race of aliens called the Tamarians. At one point, Picard is stuck on a planet's surface. He attempts to make a fire but fails. A Tamarian called Dathan takes a branch from his own fire and throws it to Picard, saying, Tamba has wide arms, to make it clear that the fire was a gift. Number 5. In the Dawnguard DLC, in the room to the left of the Grand Hall in Volkahar Keep, there is a display case containing a Hagravan Claw, a Saber Cat's Eye, a Daedra's Heart, a Dog's Ribcage, and a Gold Ring. This is a nod to Castlevania II, in which Simon Belmont must collect and destroy a nail, an eyeball, a heart, a ring, and a ribcage of Dracula to defeat him. Number 4. There is a room in Skyrim that holds the corpses of all deceased, unique NPCs. The room can only be accessed through the use of console commands, and has four exits that lead to a black void. Should the dead character be resurrected through console commands, most NPCs will be hostile towards the player. Number 3. There are two scrapped features found in the game's files that would have occurred if you killed an NPC. The first was if you killed a unique NPC that has a family, then later you would see the ghost of that NPC follow around any of their relatives. However, only NPCs with generic voice files could do this, and only a single NPC in the whole game could turn into a ghost. The second feature was if you killed a unique NPC who had a family, later talking to any of the NPC's family members will have them comment to you about their death in their hello conversation. Number 2. The appearance of a Draugr is randomized and not gender specific. This means that a Draugr can spawn with a female body and a beard. Number 1. The inn or tavern called the Bee and Barb, found in Riften, possibly has less than innocent origin, which can be found in Daggerfall's version of the real Berenzia, Part 3. Berenzia, who later becomes the Queen of Waycrest and Queen Mother to Morrowind, finds herself trying to join the Thea's Guild while in Riften. She gains sponsorship by betting with a Khajiit member of the guild inside a local tavern. It is explicitly stated it was painful, as male Khajiits, much like real-life felines, have barbed penises. This particular part of the story has been omitted in later Elder Scrolls games, stating, this passage has been censored by an order of the temple. Here is the part of the story that wasn't censored. Her hands released his turgid penis, and then it was inside her, and she was screaming in both pain and ecstasy, then everything went black. When she came to herself again, she was sitting beside Theris, who was buttoning her skirt. That hurt, she said, ignantly, she said. Always does, kid. Didn't hear anyone ever tell you about Khajiit men. It hurts good though, now doesn't it? Baron Zia scowled at him. She was still smiling. His penis had tiny little barbs on it.
Alright, that's gonna do it for this top 10 video about Skyrim. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't learn anything or didn't enjoy the video. Leave a comment if you have any suggestions for any future top 10 video about any game or game character. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.